The topic of this video is building quadratic models from verbal descriptions, economic models. All right, this is a continuation from the previous video. We're now up to part F of the same problem. What price will ensure at least $840 in revenue? All right, before we begin to answer part F, I would like to share a little bit of information with you about this particular diagram. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, equation r of x equals negative 1 8 x squared plus 200, uh, excuse me, plus 22x, and I've created the picture. Um, this is a downward opening parabola. I know that it's downward opening because of the negative 1 8 here. And what this represents is the relationship between quantity sold and revenue. So let's talk about this diagram a little bit. Let's talk first about this data point right here, sitting at the origin. Zero, zero. The x coordinate is telling you x, the quantity sold, and the y coordinate is telling you r, the revenue. Okay, so this makes sense when we think about it. When you sell zero items, you bring in zero money. Zero, zero. Let's look at this data point right here, 176. This is actually the ordered pair 176 comma zero. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky for students to understand. So I'm going to try to explain this as clearly as I know how. The only way you can get 176 items to leave your store is if the price you charge is nothing, free. And that's the reason why if you sell, and notice I'm putting that in quotation marks, 176 items, the amount of money you will bring in is absolutely zero. These are our two extremes. This is telling us the quantity of items that will bring in zero dollars. Right in the middle, halfway between those two values, is the perfect amount for us to try and sell. If you sell 88 items, which you would have to charge $11 in order to do that, then 88 times 11 would bring in the maximum revenue of $968. Okay, so now that we've had a little bit of time to look at this diagram, I think this question will make a little more sense. What price will ensure at least $840 in revenue? Well, we know that the maximum revenue we can make is $968. But what if we're willing to accept a little bit less revenue, $840? You might think to yourself, why would someone ever do that? Why would someone want less money? Well, one advantage is that you can lower the price for your product, which means that perhaps you'll steal away business from a competitor. So when we look at this particular diagram, what I've done is I've drawn 840 on the Y axis or the R axis, as well as cut this parabola, and then I've shown this green shaded region. Anything inside this green shaded region would represent a revenue that is between 840 and 968. Remember, 968 is the maximum. All right, let's now solve this problem. What price will ensure at least $840 in revenue? $840 in revenue. That's telling me that $840 is the value for R. So I'll plug that into my equation and I'll get 840 equals negative 1 8 x squared plus 22x. Now I need to solve this equation for x. The first thing I'm going to do is try to get rid of this fraction by multiplying both sides by 8. So 8 times 840 is going to equal 8 times negative 1 8 x squared plus 22x. 8 times 840 is 6,720. 8 times 1 8 is 1 because these are reciprocals. When you multiply 8 over 1 by 1 over 8, the 8s cancel and you're just left with 1. Of course, we still have this negative. So negative x squared plus, and 8 times 22 is 176x. Now move all terms to the left side. When a term changes sides, it changes signs. So I get x squared minus 176x plus 6720 equals 0. Now I have an important decision to make. I need to solve this quadratic equation. There are three methods that you can use to solve quadratic equations. You can use the quadratic equation. You can, excuse me, you can use the quadratic formula. You can complete the square or you can factor. Any one of those three will work for this particular problem. This is factorable. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, which one's fastest? Which one's best? And that will differ from person to person. Some people like playing with numbers and will enjoy finding two numbers that multiply to make 6,720 
but add to make negative 176. Other students might find that frustrating and would rather prefer a more direct route to getting their answer. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reinforce a lesson that was taught in a previous video. When we discussed circles, we learned a process called completing the square. We're going to complete the square right now for this particular quadratic equation. Completing the square works like this. First, take your constant term and move it to the other side. So we have x squared minus 176x equals negative 6720. The next step is to take your middle term coefficient and cut it in half. So what is half of negative 176? Well, that would be negative 88. And we write that down here beneath, negative 88. Now square it. Negative 88 squared is 7744. And add that value to both sides, plus 7744. Next, factor this trinomial. And you might think, well, that's just about as hard as the one we were dealing with before. But it isn't, because it's, a completely, it's completing the square. All we have to do is put an x in front of this, put the whole thing in parentheses, and then square it. Over here on the other side, we'll combine these two numbers. So 7744 minus the 6720 leaves 1024. Now use the square root property from intermediate algebra. x minus 88 equals plus or minus the square root of 1024. Turns out the square root of 1,024 is a nice number. It's 32. So we get x minus 88 is equal to 32, is equal to plus or minus 32. Which means there are actually going to be two values here. So when we move the subtract 88 to the other side, we get x equals positive 88 plus or minus 32. x equals 88 plus 32, or 88 minus 32. So we get 120 or 56. These are the two possible values of x that will bring in the revenue indicated. These are the two question marks that I had located on our diagram. We can now fill those in. So 56 or 120. And we're almost at the end of this problem, but there's something that I would like to explain before I continue. Let's take a look at this diagram. If you sell 56 items, then you'll bring in $840. If you sell 120 items, which is a lot more, you will also bring in $840. This is very confusing to students. They think to themselves, how is that possible? If you sell more items, how is it that you'll bring in the same amount of money? Here's what they fail to understand. The only way to sell more items is to lower the price. And so when you lower the price, you're bringing in less money for each item. So what we observed is that if you sell 56 items, you'll bring in $840. And if you sell 120 items, you will also bring in $840. This is almost the answer to our question. The question says what price? These are quantities, so we have to find a way to convert. X is 56. R is 840. But there's a wonderful formula, R equals X times P, that will allow us to use those two values to find the price that we're looking for. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and write X equals 120 r equals 840, we'll use the equation again and get the two prices that we're looking for. All right, here we go. Plugging these two values into this equation. 840 equals 56 times p. Divide by 56 on both sides. And we have 840 divided by 56 is 15. 15 equals p. Over here, same idea, 840 equals 120 times p. Divide by 120 on both sides, and we're going to get 7. 7 equals p. So this ordered pair on our diagram 
which lists a value of x and a value of r, gives us a value for p of, 56 was this one, $15. This dot on our diagram must be the other one, so this is where the price is equal to $7. And this one right here at the top is where the price was equal to $11. So you can see that every dot on our diagram corresponds to a different price. 7, going all the way up to 11, and then continuing up until we get to 15. So if the price is anywhere in between 7 and $15, the revenue will be $840 or higher. So we can write our final answer as 7 is less than or equal to P is less than or equal to 15. This is the end of part F, and this is also the end of this rather long problem.